In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to believe that being tough on ourselves is the only way to achieve our goals. We push ourselves relentlessly, criticize our every misstep, and trust that this stern inner voice will keep us moving forward. But what if I gently suggested that science is uncovering a kinder, more effective path? Being compassionate with yourself isn't a weakness, it's a profound strength. In fact, self-kindness is one of the most powerful ways to nurture a resilient, healthy brain. This isn't just wishful thinking, it's a truth supported by remarkable scientific research. Kindness isn't a soft alternative, it's a vital tool for building true mental strength. Let's gently question the old belief that self-criticism is the best motivator. When we're harsh with ourselves after a setback, we actually trigger our body's threat defense system. This response, which releases stress hormones like cortisol, is meant for immediate danger, not for learning from everyday mistakes. Constant self-criticism keeps us on edge, making it so much harder to learn, grow, and face new challenges with clarity and confidence. This cycle can lead to anxiety and a sense of being stuck, rather than helping us move forward. Self-compassion, far from being a weakness, is a wellspring of inner strength. It means offering yourself the same gentle care and understanding you would give a dear friend in it. It's about recognizing your own struggles and responding with warmth instead of harsh judgment. This gentle approach doesn't mean ignoring your problems or letting yourself off the hook. In fact, it creates the emotional safety you need to honestly face your mistakes. With self-compassion, you can learn and grow without being weighed down by shame or fear, a much more sustainable path to personal growth. Imagine a child who falls and scrapes their knee. Do we scold them for being clumsy or do we offer a comforting hug and gentle words? We instinctively know that kindness helps them feel safe, get back up and try again. The same gentle logic applies to our own hearts. By choosing to be a supportive friend to ourselves, we create a safe foundation from which we can explore our potential, take brave steps and recover from setbacks. This is the quiet, steady strength of self-compassion, a gentle power that grows from within. The scientific exploration of self-compassion owes a great deal to the work of Dr. Christine Neff, a pioneering researcher in this field. She has helped us understand that self-compassion is a measurable skill that anyone can learn. Dr. Neff breaks it down into three main components. The first is self-kindness which is the practice of being gentle and understanding with ourselves rather than critical. The second is a sense of common humanity, which involves recognizing that suffering and personal failure are part of the shared human experience. Everyone makes mistakes, you are not alone in your struggles. The third component identified by Dr. Neff is mindfulness. This is the practice of observing our negative thoughts and emotions with balance and awareness. It means we don't suppress our pain, but we also don't exaggerate it. We simply notice it without judgment, seeing it for what it is, a passing experience. Together, these three elements create a powerful mindset. They allow us to confront our difficulties with wisdom and grace. Dr. Neff's research has shown that people who score higher on self-compassion scales tend to have better mental health, including less depression and anxiety. Dr. Neff's work goes beyond theory. It provides a practical framework for changing our relationship with ourselves, 
by understanding these three pillars self-kindness common humanity and mindfulness we can start to deliberately practice them in our daily lives when you make a mistake you can pause and offer yourself words of kindness instead of criticism you can remind yourself that many other people have faced similar challenges and you can allow yourself to feel the disappointment without letting it define you this is not about ignoring reality it is about facing it with a kinder more supportive internal ally this research has truly opened a new door in psychology and neuroscience it has shifted the focus from relentless self-improvement driven by criticism to a more sustainable model of growth nurtured by self-support. The evidence is compelling. Treating ourselves with compassion is not self-indulgent. It is a vital practice for emotional well-being and resilience. Dr. Neff's work has laid the groundwork for countless studies that now explore exactly how this process unfolds inside our brains, revealing the remarkable changes that occur when we choose kindness over criticism. It has given us the science to back up an ancient wisdom. Modern neuroscience gives us an incredible window into the brain, allowing us to see what happens when we practice self-compassion. Using technology like Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging or FMRI, scientists can observe brain activity in real time. These studies have revealed something remarkable. When we engage in harsh self-criticism, we light up the amygdala. The amygdala is the brain's alarm system, responsible for our fight or flight response. An overactive amygdala is linked to high levels of stress, anxiety, and fear. It keeps us on edge, constantly scanning for threats, even when the threat is just our own inner voice. In stark contrast, when people practice self-compassion, fMRI scans show a different pattern of brain activity. The activity in the amygdala begins to quieten down. Its panicked alarm bells are soothed. At the same time, other parts of the brain become more active. These are the areas associated with positive emotions, caregiving and feelings of safety and connection, such as the prefrontal cortex. This part of the brain is involved in emotional regulation and thoughtful decision making. By practicing self-compassion, we are literally shifting our brain from a state of threat to a state of safety and calm. This shift has profound implications for our resilience to stress. A brain that is constantly in threat mode is brittle and easily overwhelmed. It reacts to small setbacks as if they were major emergencies. However, a brain trained in self-compassion becomes more flexible and resilient. When faced with a stressful situation, it is better equipped to regulate its emotional response. Instead of spiraling into panic or despair, it can maintain a sense of perspective. It can access the more logical planning parts of the prefrontal cortex to find solutions. This is how self-compassion builds a brain that can bend without breaking. The science is clear. Self-compassion is not just a nice idea. It's a form of brain training. Every time you choose a kind thought over a critical one, you are strengthening the neural pathways associated with emotional regulation and weakening the pathways associated with stress. You are effectively teaching your amygdala that you are safe, even when you are facing challenges. This is a deliberate process of shaping your own brain to be a calmer, stronger and more supportive partner in your life. The changes are real and they can be seen on a brain scan. The wonderful thing about our brain is its neuroplasticity, its ability to change and adapt based on our experiences and thoughts. The neural connections in our brain are not fixed, they are constantly being reorganized. 
When we repeatedly think self-critical thoughts, we strengthen the neural circuits for self-judgment and stress. It becomes a well-worn path, our brain's default response to any mistake. This is why breaking the habit of self-criticism can feel so difficult at first. The pathway is so established that our brain follows it automatically without us even realizing it. However, every time we practice self-compassion, we begin to forge a new path. We start to build and strengthen a different set of neural connections. These are the circuits of self-kindness, emotional balance, and resilience. At first, this new path may feel unfamiliar and require conscious effort. It is like walking through a field of tall grass where no path exists. But with repetition, the grass gets trampled down, the path becomes clearer and easier to follow. Eventually, with enough practice, this new compassionate response can become our brain's new default setting. This process of rewiring your brain for better mental health is accessible to everyone. It begins with a simple yet profound question. How would I treat a dear friend in this exact situation? Imagine your friend came to you feeling like a failure after making a mistake. You would likely respond with warmth, reassurance and understanding. You would remind them of their strengths and that this single event does not define them. The final step is to turn this same compassionate language inward and direct it toward yourself. Speak to yourself with the same gentle tone and supportive words. This is more than just positive thinking. It is an active change in your internal dialogue. It is about nurturing an inner environment of safety and support. By consistently choosing to speak to yourself as you would to a cherished friend, you are actively rewiring your brain. You are lowering the volume on your inner critic and turning up the volume on your inner ally. This simple practice repeated over time can lead to lasting changes in your mental health. It can transform your relationship with yourself and build a deep, unshakable resilience that will support you through all of life's challenges.